So we're now going to be considering relativistic energy. When we were looking at the non-relativistic case, we said that the change in kinetic energy was equal to the work done on the object or the particle that we were considering. In the relativistic case, we calculate the change in the kinetic energy exactly the same way. So the change in kinetic energy, delta K, is equal to W, the work done on the particle. And as with the non-relativistic case, work is calculated as F dot S, where S is the displacement and F is the force. So if we consider a particle which is moving in the x direction from x1 to x2, we can say that the work done is equal to the integral with the limits x1 and x2 of f dx. Now we've seen that the relativistic force is given by dp dt. So we can write this as delta k is equal to the integral from x1 to x2 of dp dt times dx. Now solving this gets a little bit complicated. I wouldn't expect you to be able to reproduce this, but I'm now going to switch to a screen capture to show you how we can evaluate this integral. So here I've written down the expression that we're trying to evaluate. And here is what P is equal to. The M here is the rest mass, the amount of matter which is contained in the body, and it doesn't change. So in order to evaluate this integral, we'll need to start by evaluating dP dt. So we have that dP dt is equal to the derivative of mv over the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared. Now in this derivative the mass is not changing with time. It's the rest mass so we can pull it out the front of our derivative. So we've got m times d dt and I'm going to write this expression as v times 1 minus v squared on c squared to the power of minus a half. Now what I'm going to do is differentiate this by parts. When I'm differentiating this by parts, I differentiate this expression and leave this part constant, and then I'll differentiate this part and leave this part constant. So to do that, this is equal to m times, we're differentiating this, so dv dt times 1 minus v squared on c squared to the minus a half. And now I leave this part constant, v, and I differentiate this part. To differentiate this part, I've got a power up here, so I bring this down the front, that's minus a half. And then I differentiate what's inside this bracket. So when I do that, differentiating with respect to time, one is just a constant, so it's zero when I differentiate it. The derivative of this thing is equal to minus 2v on c squared times dv dt. And then I need to subtract one of this power here. So then I've got one minus v squared on c squared to the minus three on two. Now looking at these terms, we can see that we've got minus a half and minus two. So those will cancel out. And I can write this as equal to m. I've got a dv dt here and a dv dt here. So let's pull dv dt out the front. And then this first term is equal to 1 over 1 minus v squared on c squared to the 1 half. The second term, I've got v times v, so that's v squared on c squared. That's that on c squared. Then over 1 minus v squared on c squared to the 3 on 2. So what I'm going to do is give these a common denominator. So this is m dv dt over, if I multiply it by 1 minus v squared on c squared, this one, I'll end up with 3 over 2 down the bottom. So 1 minus v squared on c squared to the power of 3 over 2. And to do that, I multiplied it by 1 minus v squared on c squared. And then I add this term plus v squared on c squared. So now you can see this minus v squared on c squared cancels this plus v squared on c squared. And I end up with m dv dt times 1 over 
1 minus v squared on c squared to the 3 on 2. So that is my expression for dp dt, which I can now put into this integral. So I've now got delta k is equal to the integral from x1 to x2 of m over 1 minus v squared on c squared to the 3 on 2 times, I've got this dv dt, and then I've got times dx. Now dx dt, that is equal to v. So what I'm going to do is change my variable to make this a derivative, uh, an integral with respect to dv. So when I change my variable, I want to change the limits on my integral as well. So let's assume at x1, the speed is equal to zero and at x2, the speed is equal to u. So I can write this integral as delta k is equal to going from zero to u, m over one minus v squared on c squared to the three on two, and then I've got this thing is v, and then that's times dv. Now, we could solve this integral, but it's lots of steps, and this isn't really a course about calculus. So we, what we can do is look up this integral. It is a standard integral. And we can see on the table of standard integrals that this is going to be equal to mc squared over the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared. And we're evaluating that at 0 and u. So this is equal to mc squared over the square root of 1 minus u squared on c squared minus, and now I put 0 in here. So I end up with mc squared divided by 1. So that's minus mc squared. So this is my expression for the change in kinetic energy when the object starts from rest. So we should check that if u is equal to 0, and it was initially at zero. So we'd expect then that the change in kinetic energy is equal to zero. So we should just confirm that that is the case. So in this case, delta k is equal to mc squared over the square root of one minus zero minus mc squared. So that's just equal to mc squared minus mc squared, which is zero, which is what we were hoping to find. So we've checked one case and it seems to work out. Now, Einstein realized that kinetic energy wasn't the only type of energy that a particle could have. The particle also had energy stored within its mass. So he described this with his very famous equation, E is equal to mc squared, where m is the rest mass of the particle. So the total energy that a particle possesses is equal to its kinetic energy plus the rest mass energy, the mc squared term. So we can write E is equal to k plus mc squared. And as k is equal to mc squared over the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared minus mc squared, we end up with E is equal to mc squared over the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared. Another very useful expression that we can use is E squared is equal to P squared C squared plus MC squared or squared. So we can show this expression is true relatively easily by substituting in our expression for the momentum. P is equal to MV over the square root of 1 minus V squared on C squared and then solving it to show that this is equal to e squared, where e is equal to mc squared over the square root of one minus b squared on c squared. So let's do that. So e squared is equal to p squared c squared plus mc squared or squared, which is equal to m squared v squared c squared over one minus v squared on c squared, plus the m squared c to the fourth, now we'll give it a common denominator. So we'll put all of this over one minus v squared on c squared. So we end up with m squared c squared. Now open brackets, because that was a common factor between both these terms. And on the top, we've got v squared from that first term. And then the second term is plus c squared times one minus v squared on c squared. And then we're dividing by our common denominator, one minus v squared on c squared. 
So this is equal to m squared c squared times b squared plus c squared minus b squared. So those v squareds cancel each other out, divided by 1 minus v squared on c squared. So this is equal to m squared c to the 4 over 1 minus b squared c squared, which is equal to e squared. So we've shown that expression now. Let's have a go at a problem now. So the question is, a proton has a rest mass energy of 966 mega electron volts and a total energy of 1325 mega electron volts. Part 1, what is its speed? Part 2, what is its momentum? Okay, so in this question we've got that mc squared is equal to 966 mega electron volts. Now, one electron volt is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. This is the charge on an electron in coulombs. And we're told that the total energy E is equal to 1325 mega electron volts. So to answer this question, we'll make, want to make use of this total energy, which is equal to mc squared over the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared. So what we're going to do is rearrange this because we know mc squared and we know e and we're trying to find v. So we can write this as the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared is equal to mc squared over e. So 1 minus v squared on c squared is equal to mc squared on e squared. And so v squared on c squared is equal to, just moving this over to this side and subtracting this one off this one, we've got 1 minus mc squared on e squared. And so v squared is equal to c squared times 1 minus mc squared on e squared. And so v is equal to c times the square root of 1 minus mc squared on e squared. So now what we can do is substitute in numbers. Let's leave it in terms of c still because that's a useful unit. And then we've got 1 minus now mc squared. That was the rest mass energy. That's 966 mega electron volts over e, which is 1325 mega electron volts. And this is squared. Now, because these are in the same units, we need to multiply them by the same things to get them into our normal units, joules. So when we do that on the top and the bottom, these units are actually going to cancel out. So we don't need to worry about those units in this part of the question. So we can solve this on the calculator and we end up with 0.684C. Now in the second part of the question, we're asked to find the momentum. Probably the easiest way to do this is to use our equation E squared is equal to P squared C squared plus MC squared squared. And so we can write P squared C squared is equal to E squared minus MC squared squared. And so P is equal to E squared minus MC squared squared over C and then we'll take the square root of this bit and I've taken the square root of the c when c squared when I divided by it. So now what we can do is substitute in. In this case we will need to worry about our units. So e squared is in mega electron volts squared and mc squared is also in mega electron volts squared. So I can do this as 1325 squared minus mc squared which is 966 squared now these are all in mega electron volts so i times them by 10 to the 6 and then to that accounts for the mega and then i need to convert from electron volts to joules so i'm times in by 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 and this is all squared so i'm squaring that and then i divide by 3 times 10 to the 8 so now I can solve this on the calculator and I end up with 4.84 times 10 to the minus 19 kilogram meters per second as my answer to this one.